Hey everyone, it's me Kirk Maston from Maston Labs and today I am going to be doing a speed edit with the new vintage slide film pack and I'm going to show you how fast it can be to get through an entire engagement session. This is 114 images. I culled it down before starting this video from 913 images. It's a fly fishing engagement between Sam and Matt, uh, Samantha, and they are an amazing couple and I can't wait to show you the speed edit. So let's get right to it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Ektachrome 100. I love this film. It's a really great slide film and I love kind of the golden glow of it. So I'm gonna do probably the first part of this entire edit uh, with Ektachrome until we get to a different situation. And then I'm gonna see if Provia or Velvia is better. So I'm gonna start editing. I'm gonna go kind of fast. Um, yeah, we're gonna do the, the three step workflow for the most part. You saw me apply the preset. I adjusted the exposure and I will occasionally adjust the temperature and tint as necessary. And the way I do it is I look at the background, I look for neutral things. So like these rocks are kind of neutral and if they're wearing any kind of neutral clothing and that's what I adjust the uh, temperature and, or the tint from. So this looks a little bit magenta. I'm gonna go just uh, a little bit more green. And there we go. That is before and after with Ektachrome. If I wanted to make it a little softer, I would just hit all soft. And that looks like a good edit. Um, I could even use um, strobe soften if I want to go softer, but I like I like the uh, the clarity and color in this. It's a really nice true to color look, and man, Ektachrome is just badass. So I've edited that first photo. Here's how fast I go. I just go to all of the next photos in the library that are similar. So I've edited this one. I'm going to go all the way down to where they really start changing, and that's probably going to be I don't know, let's go down to here and then we're gonna sync settings, check all, synchronize. This is the only way to really edit quickly. Um, it's what I highly recommend. I'm gonna deselect all, I'm gonna let these have a chance to sync. And as long as I shot them with roughly the same exposure, they're gonna be pretty close to what I want. I mean, the, the light changes throughout the day as you can see but that is not hard to fix. Very, very easy. So I've applied, I've edited one, applied to the next, and here we go. Back in my develop module. And I'm just gonna go through and just make slight uh, exposure adjustments as I go. Still looks good. Still looks good. This is the beauty of shooting in manual. Highly recommend it. There's a little bit of lens flare on this image, so I'm gonna add all hard, just to add a little more pop to it. And bring down the exposure just a little bit more. There we go. Looks good. This one could go down a little bit too. I'm gonna to go in and use um, the lens correction on tool for this, just to get rid of that vignetting. And you know, I like that a lot. I think I'm actually gonna duck back out of my library. Since I did that lens correction adjustment, I'm just gonna go down and select all of these kind of first images. I'm gonna sync again with everything checked, synchronize, and I'm gonna head back. So I decided kind of part way through this edit that I want to um, use lens correction to get that vignetting off, and so I did that. So here we go, we're gonna keep going. Back in the develop module, bring down the exposure just a little bit. And just a little bit. It's all look really good. There's a little bit of um, shadow under his hat, so let's do strobe soften to kind of soften that one up a little bit. And I'm gonna just go previous. Previous is your friend. You can just, you know, if you did just kind of something just for this little set of images, you just hit previous. Kind of speeds things up. These all look really good. Look good. Looks really good. Okay. A little bit of a change in light here, so I'm going to just drop the um, exposure down. Man, these look great. Okay. 
there's really not much to this uh, Mass and Labs workflow. It's really simple. I mean, as you can see, there's not a lot of tweaks. There doesn't need to be. Um, we've spent a lot of time just making sure that our presets are true to film, and they're going to react to film or react to light the same way that film does. So we take all the work out for you. Um, let's see if auto transform works on this. No, it can't. It can't tell. There's no man-made structures here, so I'm just going to straighten that real quick. So I just hit R and just auto rotated that myself. Get rid of those little tree things there, and that's a lot better. Okay, I think I come down on exposure just a little bit on this one. Maybe a little tiny bit warmer. Looks good. Previous. Uh, I'm gonna try to bring back the detail in the sky and the river here with, let's see, all soft is already applied. I'm gonna do strobe soften. Strobe soften was really meant for studio work, but I find with strobe soften, you can recover almost any situation you need, even if it's not, you know, a strobe studio situation. It works pretty much anywhere to make something look light and airy. So really helpful on this image with the bright sky and bright river. Let's move on. I'm going to use it on this too. That looks beautiful. So I just, uh, you know, just hit previous from the previous, you know, photo here. So you saw me in the beginning do kind of a, you know, edit one and then get the rest kind of close. And now as I go and I'm making any kind of change, you know, if, you know, within a set of images, if there's kind of a small change, instead of zooming back out to the entire um, grid, I'm just going to hit previous. These all look really good. Strobe soften and all soft plus ectochrome. It's really nailing all the highlights and sky detail exactly how I want. A little bit warmer. Great. Okay. Going through. Now I'm not switching to Provia or Velvia because I mean, I could, but this really isn't a demo of all the looks. I've done that in a previous video that you can find on YouTube or in the Mass and Labs group. I am just editing this session as though I was editing it for them again. And I delivered this a few years ago, but I just thought it was a great session to show how beautiful Ektachrome looks. It's my favorite in the new pack by far. Um, I will show the other looks too but you're gonna see Ektachrome for the majority of these first images. Always get detail shots, very important, especially if you wanna get published. Um, are we gonna use strobe soften on this? No, I like it, I like it how it is. It's gonna bring down the exposure just a little bit. Now remember, I took off the vignetting from the, you know, using a lens correction tool, I could put it back on if I wanted to, you know, occasionally kind of select or, you know, uh, force emphasis to the middle of the photo. But I still like it how it is, so I'm not going to. Moving on. Let's keep going. And I see people talk in the group about, man, they're just editing forever. They're exhausted. And yeah, editing can really suck. It can just like suck the life out of you. Um, or you can make it easy. I like making it really easy. And as you see, I am not doing a lot of stuff here. I am not going into any panel beyond the basic panel. It's all basic panel work. And I really recommend that. If you do that, life is going to be good. And again, that's something we worked really hard on, was to make it really easy for you to get through and edit quickly, get really consistent results that you're going to love and your clients are going to love, and you actually can have a life. So 
So before I mentioned um, just a second ago, it's important to get detail shots, uh, which make it much easier to get published. So if you have detail shots, those are things that a lot of publications, particularly magazines, will require in order for your image or your, your engagement or whatever to get published. It can't be just the couple the whole time. So, I mean, I don't have that many detail shots, but I have a few. So like I got this uh, reel, let me go back here for a second. I got that not too long ago. And that paired up with something else is really gonna make it easier to get your work published. The other thing I really recommend is you are in, you know, kind of one environment and it's, it, it also can be easy to kind of get sucked into staying the same distance um, from your, your subject. I highly recommend hiking around, finding the high ground, the low ground, you know, finding different ways that you can get different images out of the same small area. So we've been in just this like little rocky area the whole time shooting, probably, you know, 30 square feet. And everything you've seen so far has come from that little tiny area. And I'll start from, you know, getting really close, you know, really close up stuff like this to being further back, to having the couple be in motion, to having them lie down on a blanket that I brought. Come on. To, it's a nice shot, to getting right above them. So this was shot with a tiny little 20 millimeter manual Voigtlander pancake lens, which I really loved. And you can, I mean, I was probably two feet away from them, but it, it looks like I'm floating above them, like eight feet above them. And that's just kind of the magic of a super wide angle lens. Now, that being said, you don't want to shoot at a really strange angle with a wide angle lens because you can really make people look distorted. The reason this works is that I'm dead set over, over top of them. Like the lens is flat to the ground. Okay, now we move into the woods. I haven't applied any preset to this. So I, this whole first set was Ektachrome. I'm now gonna move over to Provia. It's a little bit cooler of a film. Definitely gotta warm that up just a little bit. And there's a lot of red reflection from this blanket. So you just kind of balance that out with green. And I'm gonna use all soft. And I'm gonna use strobe soften again because there are some kind of dark circles under her eyes from this high overcast lighting. If I was above her and she was looking up at me, I wouldn't have to use strobe soften or as many tools to balance out the exposure. But she's looking straight at where her head's kind of tilted down. So the light's coming from above. And we have to like brighten up a little bit under the eyes there. So let's move on from that photo. Okay. Here we go. This is all again with um, Provia. So Provia, and then the reason you just saw it change is that I also used All Soft and Strobes, uh, Strobe Soften. Oh, I can't talk. Okay, there's a lot of vignetting again in this next set. So I'm gonna do lens correction on. That's more of my style. I don't like a lot of vignetting. If you do, that's totally okay. You can leave it on. Um, and if you've seen any of my other millions and billions of videos, I normally crop my vertical frames to more of a medium format look. So, you know, four or five, something like that. But I won't, uh, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to um, because a lot of people don't do that and I just don't want it to take forever. That, that takes a little bit longer to uh, delicately crop a bunch of images. Uh, I might actually call this one out. It's too wide of a lens, too close. So I probably wouldn't deliver that one. Now stepping back, it's a lot better. Okay, now I've got my edit more dialed in. I'm liking it. This is Provia. I'm gonna duck back out like I've shown you before. So I like that edit. 
Now I'm going to go through everything that is similar. So it's, it's not that many more shots, but up until there, I'm going to synchronize. And while that, while, uh, Lightroom is thinking, I'm going to go back in. Okay. It looks like this guy was shot just a little bit darker. That's fine. I've got the bulk of the edit, um, applied to him. So I can just go back in and work on that. Actually, that looked kind of cool, a little bit darker and moodier. I might leave that one like that. That looks good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Very cool. A little bit cooler. It's looking good. And you can tell that I'm, I'm really, you know, trying to work, work with this couple to, uh, use the limited amount of props that we have, you know, the things that we brought with us. So it was kind of difficult to hike in there. We've got, you know, their clothing and the blanket, and there's a lot you can do with that. So we go from serious to, you know, smiling, uh, let's see a little bit of strobe soften. I'm going to stick with, and yeah, we're going to stick with Velvia or, uh, Provia fine tune my tint. Maybe drop the, the uh, temperature just a little bit. That looks good. Nice skin tone. I mean, here's the raw. That looks pretty good. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Now we're a little bit too green. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to these last three because I feel that they're probably all going to sync up really nicely. And now we're going, we're going fast again. Oh, okay, so we just come down just a little bit. Looks good. Looks good. Detail shot. This is what you need. You want to get published. I know I'm kind of repeating the same thing over again and again here, but a lot of the publications that I ever was published in, and I tried to get every single engagement or wedding that I ever shot, I tried to get it published and got most of them published. You have to have those, those details. So if you just see an opportunity to grab a detail, just do it, put it in your back pocket and it'll help you get published later. Okay. We're on to a different environment here. I don't know what's going to look best here. We might come back to, I think we're going to come back to Ektachrome because they're standing out in this wheat field. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of contrast here. Again, it's high, it's high overcast. You can see that Matt is squinting. So we're going to have to kind of pull out a few tricks here. So all soft and strobe soften. Great combo. Highly, highly recommend it. It's a newer tool that we've introduced in the night and day pack, which came out before this one. And it's in this one. And we are working on some more updates to the tool sets, um, for all the packs. So lots of good stuff to look forward to lots of new technology and things we were working on during the pandemic when it was really hard to do test shoots. And we got a lot of new stuff, um, to show you guys. It's all looking really good. Okay. That coat is so cool. I love it. All right. We're in a new environment. Let's, uh, let's move on to, let's see if, if Velvia is going to work. So Velvia is very colorful. It's, it's really meant for, um, landscapes, but we've got some wall art coming up in these shots. So let's see how Velvia works with that. I don't know if it's my, if, you know, it'd be my first choice. I still love Ektachrome. I just love Ektachrome. I could do the whole thing in Ektachrome. I just feel like I need to show you a little bit more. So Velvia, it is warm it up a little bit. Uh, this is going to, this is with my pancake lens. I believe the, the really wide one. Oh no, it's with my 35, but I think it needs a few things. It needs uh, lens correction and we're going to do auto transform. These are also tools that we have in the toolkit. Um, all soft and strobe soften. Maybe a little less pink, a little more green. That looks pretty good. So before, after, you know, I don't think it, I actually don't think it needs any of the tone profiles or other tools. I think we're going to leave it just like that. I like it. Okay. 
uh, previous. There we go. It included all the other corrections we just did, which is great. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to back up. I'm going to apply it. I'm going to go back one photo. I'm going to go back, not this photo, but this photo. Okay. I'm going to go back to this. Then I'm going to grab these other photos like that. And then I'm going to go into sync settings, but I'm going to deselect crop and I'm going to deselect transform. Why? Because the transform and crop that I did on these other two photos will not work correctly on these. It's, it's a long story, but it's just not something that um, Adobe has figured out how to sync dynamically between photos. It's going to literally grab the same transform from this photo and apply it to these, and it's going to be the wrong transform. So sometimes you got to slow down and resync without those tools if you've just used them. Get rid of this little black thing on the side there. It's a nice clean photo. This is right outside of the of Tweety's Cafe, which is the cafe that is in the show Twin Peaks. If you've ever seen Twin Peaks, it's one of my favorite shows. Um, and this is where one of the main characters goes and gets his uh, cherry pie and coffee. All right. It's in a place called North Bend, Washington, if you're interested. And before I was showing you stuff from Snoqualmie Falls. So let's go, uh, let's see, we're outside. Different environment, what do we want to do? Well, we could do like massively colorful Velvia. It is a landscape film. I don't know if it fits the vibe of this exactly. It's a little bit too bright, a little bit too colorful. Um, it's bringing out those Velvia blues and greens and it's just a little bit too much. So I'm, I think I'm gonna take a step back and go back to Ektachrome. And I'm gonna get this dialed in to how I want. So temperature, tint, exposure, those are the kind of the main things. And again, you can see this massive amount of vignetting. I am not a fan, so we're gonna take that away with the uh, lens correction tool. Um, and the photos, hey, oh, that's cool. Auto transform is detecting kind of the keystoning that was in this photo. I don't know how it did that because there's no buildings, but somehow we could see how the people were leaning backward. Now that's a nice photo. So before, after with Ektachrome and some small tweaks. Um, does it need all soft? No, I love it how it is. It's fine. Okay, so I did a transform on that. I'm gonna select the next few photos here. Um, and I'm going to, so I'll show you. So I did, a, I did transform on this photo. I wanna, again, use everything I used on this photo with these next few photos, but I don't want to have crop or transform in these next ones. So from the last time I synced, they're still deselected. So that's fine. I am getting rid of the vignetting on all of them though. Whoops. Just pushing random buttons here. Okay. So we edited this one, applied it to the next. That looks good. Uh, let's see here. We're getting a little bit closer up. Uh, it's a little contrasty close up. Let's do strobes off and again, kind of the magic tool. Uh, slide films are very contrasty by nature. So strobe soften takes it away from being as accurate um, to film as the original because everything we make is based off of actual film looks, not made up, but actual tests that we do. And strobe soften is kind of veering away from accuracy, but in some cases, like in this case, again, we're in this high overcast environment, it's really good for kind of toning down that um, contrast. I mean, look at the, like her arm, you know, it's just like glowing. Uh, if we use strobe soften, we kind of bring everything back. And this is a tricky color here. It's like this light pink, you know, it's just much better with a little bit of strobe soften. 
Good photos. All right, we changed location. Now we are in front of this gigantic log that's in town. It's about 20 feet tall. Um, unfortunately, people ride all over it, but it's still a cool background. And I'm wondering how this is gonna look um, with the different looks. Cause that log is pretty interesting. I'm gonna go with Provia on this one. I'm going to brighten it just a little bit with exposure, warm it up just a little bit. Damn, that looks cool as hell. That looks really cool. I love it. Okay. Um, add just a little bit of green. Why, you may ask. Let me, let me just show you why. Because I can see in his shirt, his black sweater, you can see that it's got a little magenta in it. And by looking at that, I can correct that out with green, get that a little more neutral. And when I do, it's going to make all the other colors lock into where they should be. So I like that better. Um, does this need lens correction? Let's see. Do we like it with lens correction? I like it without. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave it without. Um, I would normally go in and just, or I'll do it. I'm going to pop, pop that on there. So I just cloned out that little piece of dust on his sweater. I'm going to bop back out to here, select the next few images, hit sync settings. Um, I don't want that spot removal to carry through, so I'm going to un no, deselect that. I'm going to synchronize. Give everything a second. And then I'm going to come back in and just kind of double check uh, all of the work and make sure that everything is coming through okay. And I'm going a little bit faster than Lightroom can keep up with me, uh, but that's okay. All right. All right, Matt, you got that little thing on your sweater. So let's take that out with the healing brush there. In fact, you got a few little things. Otherwise, that looks great. Got a little dust thing there. That's fine. Let's take that out. Got another little dust thing there. I don't know. The logo on your shirt kind of looks like dust, so I might, I might take that out on the ones that are farther away because we can't tell what the heck that is. Okay, moving on. That looks fine. Looks fine. Little detail shot, like I, I said before, very important. Another detail shot, this is showing kind of environmental detail. Um, there's a heck of a lot of sky up here. This is definitely a photo that I would crop more of a four or five or medium format style. And I would probably crop in past that garbage can. Um, and if, if I really wanted to like get into it, I might clone this person out because they have nothing to do with the shoot. So well, let's, nah, well, let's try it. Let's see what happens. We're going to just make, make this person disappear. Okay. That's not quite what I wanted. It's fine. Pick something nearby. Uh, this might, this, this is not happening. Okay. We're going to skip that. That's something I would go into uh, Photoshop for. Photoshop's um, subject to where uh, healing and cloning is amazing and would probably take care of that in a second, but uh, Lightroom is just not that smart yet. Yep, I think it's Ektachrome again. Uh, again, we've got, you know, he's squinting. It's pretty bright out. We're gonna use some of our tools here, all soft, strobe soften, increase the exposure just a little bit. Looks pretty good before, after. Want a lens correction on? Yes. Okay, that looks good. Let's bop back out here for a second. And I'm just gonna select the last few images. We're gonna sync settings. I'm gonna check all this time. Uh, no particular reason why. Just because I don't wanna forget the lens correction that's in there. And it looks like we are basically done. Here are the last few photos. Another detail shot, very important. Got to have those detail shots. And I have this in here twice for some reason. Oh, okay, this one needs to come down just a little bit. Got a little different situation here, a little backlighting situation. I'm going to bring the exposure down. We're going to go back to the original Ektachrome and remove the uh, highlight or the all soft and the strobe soften because this is a very different situation. I want to make sure I get it right. Warm it up. 
Uh, we do have some really hot highlights here. So let's, yeah, let's do, let's do all soft. I don't think we need strobe soften. No, I think strobe soften makes it, it takes away the contrast too much. That looks pretty good. And I think we could probably apply it to this one too. There we go. Uh, that is a nice photo. Nice photo to end it on. All right. Um, let's, let's check our work. Let's see how it looks. I would say it looks pretty good and that did not take very much time. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, you can reach me and the team in the Mass and Labs Facebook community. Uh, just search for us, come and join. It's a great place to be. We teach a lot of really cool techniques and tricks. You don't have to be a Mass and Labs user to be there. Um, you can learn something anyway, and you can see the great work that everyone is doing every day. So I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Check out the vintage slide pack on our website and have a great day and happy editing.